so I thought we could just jump right into it. Um, before we get into all like the E3 and that kind of fun stuff, uh, I thought we could just talk about probably one of the major stories that is occurring right now, um, and that is coming out of PlayStation. Uh, there was a newspaper article, well, not a newspaper article, but there was an article that came out talking about how some of what we thought were PS5 exclusives are not so exclusive anymore. Uh, this is coming from IGN, let's see, and it is written by Adam Bankhurst, and he's talking about how um, Herman Hulst was doing a Q&A on the PlayStation blog, and some of the things that came out that were really interesting, one, God of War Ragnarok is being delayed, which I don't think anyone is really surprised by or shouldn't be surprised by. But what has rattled a few feathers is the idea that some exclusives are coming to PS4. So in particular, what I think got a lot of people riled up is the idea that God of War um, Ragnarok is going to be coming to the PS4 instead of being a PS5 exclusive. Now, this obviously angered a bunch of people and they were kind of upset. And I guess my question to you, Adam, is should people be surprised or, and should people be upset that God of War Ragnarok is going to be a PS4 and PS5 game? The short answer is no. The I've... long answer is no. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> how many people have a console right now? Like, it's it's really saying, by the way, all you people that can't get one, it's you, you can't play this game. It's like saying to anybody right now who can't build a PC because you can't get graphics cards anywhere. Hey, I know you really want to play games on Steam right now because the summer sale is coming up, but too bad. It's like, guys, any other point in the years, like any other time that isn't pandemic time, we can have this conversation. But we're not talking about a full, like a, a console that's had about a year to get its footing, I'm sure it's like six months and chains, but realistically, we're getting close to a year. Yeah, we could understand people being like, okay, no, we should be getting some decent exclusive games by now. But we didn't make nearly as many consoles as we should have made at this point. Not to mention that none of them were ever really sold in store, so scalpers have taken a shit ton of them, more than they ever should be. So we're talking about a very limited customer base. Why do you think so many games right now on PS5 are dead? Why do you think Destruction All-Stars, even though it was free for PlayStation Plus, is dead and is so dead that the developers are putting bots in the online game just to make the peop like the 20 people left playing it at least enjoy it? It's because there isn't enough people. We all I sat here and said, like, look, I'm okay with waiting. But at the same time, I'm not okay with waiting for games I want to play. Because if I can't get the thing that I need to play the thing I want, especially, like, it's not a thing of I don't have the money. It's the thing of I can't get it. That's bullshit. Like, you should be able to stand in line at a store to get your, to get your console. If there's literally no way for you to get one, and you're told that, by the way, this thing that you really want, you, you literally have no way of getting it, that's a pretty shitty thing to do to a customer. And like I said, any other time, I'd say, eh, you know, you'll get to play it in six months at most. This time, it's like, eh, you might get to play it next year. But I mean, that's not an issue because it was going to be delayed anyway. So I, I, I guess in contrarian to that argument, it's like, well, there might be, you know, more consoles out by the time this game comes out. Well... We still might have shortages, according to most people, so that might still be a factor next year. So we got to keep that in mind. It just comes down to like, I've seen, most of the arguments that I've seen are related on like, oh, it's going to reduce its power. Or it's not going to be as like amazing a game. The Horizon, I believe, we were told it was actually de like first designed for PS4 and just got a graphics update for PS5. So like, I would imagine God of War Ragnarok's probably in a similar boat that it started its development on PS4 and slowly worked its way into getting like a little bit heavier on the processing power for say a PS5. But I don't think their intention from the very beginning was to make this an exclusive. And it just made it easier for them during the pandemic to actually make that decision that it was not going to be exclusive to one console. See, I'm of the, I'm of the opposite mind. I mean, I do understand, you know, it is beneficial for those of us who couldn't get a PS5 that they can now play it when it comes out day and date. However, I think that's a bad reason alone to to make this game be a ps4 and ps5 game i think first of all having it as a ps4 game you're going to have to make decisions in the game development and the designing of it 
to reflect the fact it's on a PS4. So you're going to have to have those typical sort of squeeze through a can like a, a like a crevice or something like that to get to the next level to help with those loading times. I don't think there's going to be a way to remove those loading times from the game for a PS5 version, but then still have it for a PS4. So I think you're not going to be able to take advantage of things like the SSD. Like you're still going to have to have those buffering cutscenes in there to kind of help with the PS4 version. So I do think that there's going to be some sort of not necessarily a downgrade or like it's not going to make the game worse, but it's not going to be its full potential by having it be a PS4 and PS5 game. In terms of the idea of it being of like, you know, like not making it because some people are available. Like I was trying to remember the PS4 and when that came out, you had things like Infamous Second Son and you had Killzone uh, Shadowfall, which was, you know, both of them were PS4 exclusives and they never made a PS3 you know, iteration of those games. And I think that, you know, especially those games really benefited from the fact that the PlayStation 3 wasn't kind of holding it back in terms of what it can do. And I think that, you know, God of War and Horizon. Horizon, maybe I could see an argument for it because it is within that first launch window. But the fact that Ratchet and Clank isn't having a PS5 release, and I don't think Returnal did either. Um, Demon Souls didn't either. It was pretty much just Miles Morales and... God of War and Horizon are the ones that have been confirmed. Well, you notice the, you notice the trend in there. Then it's all like the biggest ones. They're trying to get the most at launch. Whereas you're talking Demon Souls, which is a very hardcore niche. You're talking Returnal, mm -hmm. which is a new IP, and you're talking Ratchet, which let's be honest, that game was specifically designed with the SSD in mind. So no, I know. So it's it's like what what people are expecting between the two different games. Like I know people are going to go back to some of these exclusives, say like Killzone, Shadowfall, and stuff like that. To which it was. Again, I'll go back to being like, was that series like literally the biggest thing? To which I say, nah. by that point, I'd say, I would so say much. infamous. I would say infamous at that point was like, I, I would say you know at the end of the PS3, infamous was one of the big franchises. You had sure. Uncharted, you had Last of Us, and I would say infamous was probably the third one there. Um, well, Last of so Us, I, was, Last of, yeah, because Last of Us was on both. Actually, it, sorry, Last of Us came out first on PS3 and got the remaster. And then got right. the remaster, yeah. I so mean, I don't think... Like, so my, my thought is, like, if you look at something like... I, I mean, we haven't played Ratchet & Clank yet, but I'm looking at how that game is looking in terms of, you know, doing all of the quick loading with the portals and, you know, the lack of load times that we're hearing in the reviews, and I think that's awesome. And it's something I'd like to see with God of War. Imagine going through, you know, different, like, areas and stuff and not having to have that you know, the Bifrost reaching his tentacles and doing all that kind of like those cutscenes that they do for loading. And I mean, it's fine. It, it doesn't take away from the game, but it also doesn't add to it. And I think, you know, at first when this was being done, we thought it was revolutionary to see like Nathan Drake squeeze through a crevice. And you're like, oh, my God, there's no load times. Like, where are these load times? But now we kind of know like, OK, this is cool, but it's it's a loading screen. Well, I and mean, so sorry, you can finish what you're doing there. No, I was just going to say. So for me, like I get like. I get that there's a huge market base for the PS4, but I feel like Sony, especially, I don't, like, they need more exclusives. And I think by having games in 2022, and I'm assuming that God of War is going to be a summer game at the earliest in 2022. Like, a lot of people are going to have the PS5 by that point, and a lot of people are going to want to have reasons to justify their console. And if it doesn't, if it's being held back by the PS4, you know, it's not going to be firing on all cylinders like it could especially no. something as big as god of war yeah but i mean the question that we asked is should people be mad to which i say no you shouldn't be mad you should just be like kind of like disappointed ish like i've yeah, seen people I, rage about it and i'm like guys yeah. you still get to play the game it's not like it's only on ps4 and even if that was the case it's backwards compatible this isn't ps3 so mm -hmm. it's not like people who are freaking furious when some games were like only like you can't play your old ps3 games or stuff that you missed that was only released on that for some reason and it misses that. We're not having this conversation. So, like, you're only mad just because apparently you're not going to get God of War, like, 25% better. Like, if you guys are really that trusting in Sony, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, those two games will still be incredible. Mm -hmm. It just might not have all the, th like... And I've also, I'm also wondering, too, like, how different is it going to be apart from things like loading times and stuff? Which, don't get me wrong, I love the fact that we're getting these better things now. But, I mean, realistically, we're not 10 years removed from loading screens being a thing of the past. We're talking about six months ago. Yeah. And for most games, we aren't really seeing too much of a difference in comparison to, like, 
what we're going to see two, three years down the line when we see people really getting what the power of this console can do. So we're talking about things that, quite frankly, we aren't even accustomed to yet. So I'm more just like, eh, I'm not that annoyed by it. I mean, I'm more just like, I'm okay that everybody gets to play games. And I'm more going to take the side of the of the majority of fans that get the chance to play these games. Because in a, in a time like this, and like I said, this is only a pandemic thing. If this was a normal year, we'd probably have a much different conversation on this. Or at least I would. I'd still be yeah. like, hey, guys, don't rage over it. But I'd also be like, hey, Sony, like... You're going to put all of your major franchises on everything here. You're going to actually have one that really sets you apart from Xbox. But because we're in this such an anomaly of a, of a couple of years right now, I'm willing to be like, dude, do whatever you got to do to get, to keep as many people happy right now. Because uh, I think people are looking for something to smile about at this point. You know, it's kind of hard because you're making me feel like I'm like, you know, the the entitled privilege kind of like top of my tower being like, no, like... You cannot play my game. I would say that wasn't my goal, but I mean, if it works to get you to come back to my side, you know what? I'll keep playing that card. Let's go. I guess for me, it's just like, I'm not once one trying to advocate that people should be raging and death threatening and everything. But that's dumb. These are video games. Nothing matters about this. This is inconsequential. We're talking about basically media. Well, even my question, like, even if I was to respond to that being like, does it matter that it's going on PS4? My answer is still no, it doesn't matter. It's fine. The game will still be like an eight, nine, 10 out of 10. You're still going to love it. Albeit unless something crazy happens, please don't, don't, don't let me jinx this. But I mean, (laughs) if everything's fine, we're still going to love the game and we're not going to notice like a few going under a a tree trunk to get through something or like going through a little crevice. Like you're not going to notice it because you're going to be too busy worrying about the next thing you get to throw an ax at or the next giant metal robot that you get to friggin take an arrow to. Like we're not going to be thinking too hard about it because most of the things that PS5, if it was exclusive, would be doing with this game are not nearly as transformative as we sometimes think it is, but it's all the little things that would add over time. I guess from my perspective, and I hear exactly what you're saying, is it going to matter? No. I mean, people, you know, talk about like Breath of the Wild and how amazing of a game that was. And that game was also released on the Wii U and the Switch. So like I can see that argument. But I guess for me is that the messaging going into Sony is that, you know, we believe in it. We believe in iterations of consoles. We believe in like, you know, console generations. And, you know, they had this whole talk of like they're not doing backwards compatibility. They're not doing like this is the next generation. And now that's changed in that, you know, you kind of do believe in transitioning between consoles. And so it's it, it kind of, I don't know, it seems disingenuous to the people who did, you know, spend the money to get a, a next gen console hoping to get the benefits. And well, no sure. offense, no offense, though, but like, I feel like as a PS5 owner, like it hasn't really been unlocked yet. Like, and I mean, it's also the choices of games that I'm playing, but like in the six months that we've had, the big games that we've had release are. Demon Souls, Miles Morales, which was a PS4 game as well, Returnal, and Ratchet and Clank. And of those two, Demon Souls, Returnal, and Ratchet were the only ones that are exclusive to PS5. At and the same time, we're also right. less than a year into this console's life cycle, and there's still plenty of things that we have no idea that are coming yet. Mm-hmm. It's definitely in the next 12 months, too, that are going to be really going nuts. Because, I mean, look, I get it, too. Like, I think we're both at this point where we get each other's side here. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, which do you prefer over the other? And to me, I'm like, dude, like, I I was fine. Like, I literally have the PS5 version of Watch Dogs Legion in my collection now, and I've been starting to tinker with that. It still wouldn't have made too much of a difference. Actually, that's a lie. I played the performance mode in the end, the 30, the 30 frames mode. I hate 30 frames now. <laughs> but you would still get 60 frames whether the game was specifically exclusive or not and that's really the only thing that i'm too caring about right now like as as a guy who's never been big into pc gaming believe me ps5 games having 60 frames per second capability is is actually life-changing anything else like loading times i can de- i can deal with a two second clip of me going through a, a freaking cliff crevice if it means i get c- consistent 60 frames per second this entire way through i'm fine with that i'm cool i can deal with it fair enough, fair enough. it's just it's just like I heard what you said, too, about like, oh, well, Sony said they believed in generations. I'm like, yes, Sony probably believed in generations without a, a virus killing hundreds of thousands of people going on at the same time. So that's I know it's going to sound like I keep using that excuse, but we don't have a precedent like this in the video game industry. What do you expect me to go to? I don't I, I don't know. I feel like for stuff like and I'll leave it at this. I just I feel like these decisions to go PS4 
existed beyond the pandemic. Like, I can't imagine that. Well, I mean, we were it's, told it's not, at the it's very not beginning that Ragnarok was supposed to be PS5 exclusive, so there had to be a reason as to why they didn't, why they changed their mind, right? Yeah. And I can only I think maybe, of maybe, one thing. Like, what, do you, what what's it really going to be? I guess maybe it is. Maybe it's not that hard for them to upgrade or downgrade for one or the other. And I mean, but. as far as I've seen, we even the... Um, PS5 versions of games continually get like better updates. Like Watch Dogs is about to get a uh, a like a 60 frame per second ray tracing update soon. Mm-hmm. So like it's still possible that they can do a lot of things to kind of like make it as good as it possibly can be. It, there just might be a couple of tiny things like like you said, the whole like crawling into a crawling into like a, a, a hollow log or something to kind of just take some of it so that the PS4 can still run the same thing. To which. I mean, we're going to see it, too, with Horizon very soon, assuming it comes out this year, which I hope it is. Otherwise, we're going to all feel real stupid by the end of this. Yeah. That the only thing we're going to notice differently is the frame rate and just how amazing the foliage texture is going to be. Yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm kind of I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm kind of disappointed, but I, I don't think hey, it's I got no problem with disappointing. Like, yeah, I'm sad, too. I, I'm just, I'm just, it's hard for me to be sad because I'm going to play this cardigan on you because apparently it works. I feel like I'm an asshole if I'm sad for me and not for the tens of millions of people that wouldn't be able to play this game. So, uh, Kaylin, you're the worst person on this planet and uh, everybody should be uh, shaming you right now. Uh, So specifically email pixelplaypodcast at gmail.com and tell Kaylin how much of a selfish, entitled douchebag he is. You know what? We could even just save it on the email. You just let us know in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, just put us in the comments. How wrong am I in terms of it coming to P- God of War coming to PS4 versus PS5? Once again, I'm not advocating for like harm or like, you know, flipping out on people like these are just video games. But I think from from a fan of Sony, like I'm just disappointed with the decision. But let us know in the comments what you think about God of War coming to PS4.